invite our uh, Facebook audience. Hello, everybody. We sorry that we are 24 minutes late, but we had some technical difficulties, some power out situations. These things happen, but yet at the same time, God knows how to turn it around. So the, the, those that are here, we're going to praise God. Those that are watching by our Facebook, we're going to get ready to praise God because you have entered into the revival zone. In the harvest, we're in revival. And if you are looking at us and you're checking us out online, I want to invite you to come check us out as my wife gets ready. I want to come check, I want you to come check us out at 20, at uh, what, what's 29, what is this address? 2926 East Washington Street uh, Sunday morning at 11 a.m. and come and receive you what God has for you and make sure if you're looking at this, share it with somebody and be blessed in the name of the Lord. So Father, we thank you for this time. We turn the service over to you. We release our, we talk, we release our we release, we release our faith, and we believe you for breakthrough. We release our faith. We believe you for a move of God. We believe you, Lord, for a move of God. Hallelujah. Yes. That a move of God is happening today. We bind all demonic and, uh, uh, disturbances, but we pray, Jesus, be Lord over the service to the glory of God. Save, heal, and deliver, and set free by the power of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. And the church said, let's give God praise because my wife did not get a toast right that one girl that she's been working on and talking to, um, I was driving up and while I was driving up, I think what did happen when I was driving up, and she said the sinner's prayer. She literally led, him to, led her to Jesus, said the sinner's prayer, so we are working and she's working on discipling her. We are believing that she's going to be in these seats. We are believing that she's going to go forth in the name of the Lord. It's not about just bringing them to church. It's about getting them saved. It's about getting them to church, getting them saved, but thank God for a soul. Let's give God praise for one of many. Now let's get ready for some praise and worship. Let's get ready to praise God and sing amen as uh, as Dr. Tara come on up and sing us a couple of songs. We'll sing around uh, two, three, four songs, I don't know, and uh, flow in the Holy Ghost. And um, and then we get into the Word so we have enough time to do everything we need to do. And for you all on Facebook to be able to enjoy everything that's going on. So amen as she comes. And if you will, let's stand up and get loose and get ready to praise our Lord. Amen. Well, come on, stand up and get loose. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, get loose. That's a good way to start. Come on, get loose. Get loose. Hallelujah. Get loose in the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. We get stiff out there, especially when you got to socially distance yourself. And then we come to church and we socially distance ourselves from God, and from the Holy Ghost, and we don't know how to get loose in God and how to praise God so we come and be all uptight in the house of God but we've got to when you go to praise God you can't be uptight and socially distanced in praise you got to get loose somebody say get loose, get loose. as a, as apostle used to say you got to get holy ghosty <laughs> glory to God so we praise him we believe in praising the Lord. God bless you. Social media, God bless you. Everybody in the house, everybody in the tabernacle. Hallelujah. We're going to praise his name. I came to praise him. Come on, clap those blessed hands. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Late in the midnight hour. Hey, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. It's going to work in your favor. It's going to work in your favor. Hey, shout out to I hear favor, favor, favor. Favor, favor, favor. Favor, favor, favor. Favor, favor, favor. Hallelujah. It's going to work in my favor. It's going to work in your favor. Look at somebody and say it's going to work in your favor. Come on, tell them, tell them. It's going to work in your favor. Tell somebody else. Come on. It's going to work in your favor. It's going to work in your favor. Stop thinking about yourself and tell somebody else. Come on. Encourage somebody. It's going to work in your favor. It's going to work in your favor. Come on, prophesy. Speak it into somebody's life. Come on. Tell them, I declare favor over you. I declare favor in your life. Say, I declare favor in your week. Favor all in your week. Favor all over your week. Come on, come on. Just look at people. Point at them. Come on, come on, come on. Talk to them. Talk to them. Talk, talk, talk. Talk, talk, talk. talk, talk. Come on, you can declare a thing. God said it. It'll be established. He's going to do it when you say it. You'll have whatever you say. Come on, do we believe in speaking? Come on, come on. Speaking spirit, glory to God. 
you know it comes on down and it comes to everybody else. So that's why you ought to be happy. You ought to be glad. You ought to declare things for your man of God. Because that means if God can do it for him, then if God can do it for you. Glory to God. It doesn't mean you are beneath him. It's just order. It's just order. God is a God of order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all. Hallelujah. So now, are you excited about what's coming to the man of God? Because I'm going to tell you this. One thing about us, we are not trying to make a name for us. God's already got our name as long as our names are in the book. What we're looking at is not where God is taking us. We're looking at where God is taking us. Hallelujah. Are you understanding? Where God is taking us. That means you too, Facebook. That means you too, YouTube. Where God is taking the body. Where God is taking this assembly. Hallelujah. God is taking us. That's why we say stay connected. It's important. There's a legacy. You got to tap in. Glory to God. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's worship the Lord. Let's worship him. He's great. He's a great God. He's wonderful. He's awesome in everything he does. Hallelujah. There's no guile in him, no division in him, no separation. Hallelujah. He's a God of unity. Hallelujah. He's a God of love. Oh God. Hallelujah. Come on, let his let his love pour down. Let the anointing come down like oil. Oh, come on, as it's pouring down. I just see it coming down. Just like just like warm oil. Just pour down all of it. Hallelujah. It just brings healing. to your body, to your soul. Oh, come on, he's holy. Only a holy God knows how to do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, we must fall down at his feet. Just lay everything else aside. We worship the name of Jesus.
praise Him. Let's just have it praise Him. Let the yokes be destroyed. Let the chains fall off.
the house of God. Glory to God. Well, we praise the Lord. And how many know there's a word that's coming? There's a word. Hallelujah. Oh, 
connection to this house, you can't help but to be ready to give honor to the man of God that we have. Because there's no vision. 
And where there's no vision, the people perish. And we are in a place where a lot of people are perishing. But I'm so glad that I'm in a house where there's vision. So that's why you need to make sure you are connected. That's why you need to be on the prayer line on Tuesdays. That's why you need to tune in when you can on Mondays. Why you need to make sure that you like Paul and Tara Thompson Ministries, the new page. Why you need to share it with your friends, invite them to like it so we can get those numbers up. Why you need to be following us on YouTube, amen. Why you need to be on the Indie Harvest page and be on there on Wednesdays, on your Bible study. It's your Bible study, amen, for your church. Get up there and get the word. It's your weekly faith connection. You need to be connected to faith for how to live. How to live a successful and prosperous life. God called us to live one type of life and that is Amen. But you can't live the abundant life if you're not receiving that abundant word. Jesus said, these words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are Oh, that was kind of shaky. So if he was speaking the words of life and the man of God or I or whoever is designated to speak virtual through the virtual channels on, you know, on that Wednesday and they're speaking life and you're not up there to get your life, yeah. you're missing something. You're cutting your life short. Right. You don't want to cut your life short. Amen. And then if you just want a little fun and you would like to be supportive, amen, amen. we need you to like and follow the FFF Network, amen, amen, on Thursdays. And although it's called Married with Benefits, and we're not just talking about marriage. If you've ever gotten up there and looked at anything, even if it's not at the time that we're on because we're changing our time, uh, because the girls have things they do, so you know. We're their servants, so we have to make sure they are at their stuff. We don't mind. We're glad they're involved in things. But uh, you can go back up there later and check out everything and see the stuff that we're talking about. But be a support. We have Prophetess Burns doing her thing. Be a support. When you see Sister Janet doing different stuff, check out what she's doing and be a support. Go over there and see what she's doing. Get some, what is that, some Mary Kay? And check it out. Y'all know your feet get husky. Go get some of them sack feet and hands. Work that stuff out. Support our brothers and sisters. Amen. Our brother's going to be doing stuff. Let's support our man of God. Support me. Let's support Mr. Ashley. Sister Ashley. Let's support mother. Let's support one another. Let's support our young people when they're doing stuff. Amen. Amen. I said amen. All right. Sound like I was going to do it you. I said amen. I said amen. All right. <laughs> so we want to be supported. Let's support the body. And when you find something good in the body, even if it's not out of this house, let's connect one another. Because things are changing. Things are moving. Amen. And so now we're going to hear a word that is going to inspire us and going to change us and going to move us. Come on and jump to your feet. Come on, jump, jump, jump. Hallelujah. Uh, jumping by faith. Glory to God. Clap your hands for our mighty man of God. Hallelujah.
ever since uh, a little bit after, before Candy, I kind of got some new direction about what I wanted to do. Haven't really been talking about it because I, I didn't want to talk about it. I just wanted to do it. And so certain things I just wanted to work on doing. So certain those things I'm working on doing, um, I'm still in the invitation mode. Invite, 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 invite. I'm still in that thing. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I just need you to connect to the partner page. And as you connect to the partner page daily, I will use that time to begin to pour vision out, okay? And that would be a perfect time that you all can hear the vision and what's in my heart about what we desire to do and, and, and steps and all that type of stuff, all right? So that's what I'm going to use that for um, so I can use this time for all the word and, uh, and to get into what I want to do. Uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Uh, grab your Bibles um, and, uh, um, you know, uh, they was, I got my, my uh, what they call this, portfolio? You know what they call these things? I, forget you. Yeah. Um, I got my portfolio out. Right. So I'm, I'm going to do, I mean, we're going to do some, we're going to get into some word today. Amen. Right. Yeah. We're going to get into some word today. Amen. Um, we can get to some word today. So I want you to, I pray you, you know, I, 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 work, I, I just brought everything digital so I can be quick. Um, get into some word to build your faith and to, and to get you going. I, I may have to pray for somebody uh, specifically, but I'm always ready to pray. Isn't it interesting? Isn't it good? How are your stomach feeling? Um, so it was, it was, your stomach was hurt when you came in. It was hurt. It was hurt for a couple of days, you think? And so it was hurting like right up in there. It was hurt bad. And uh, what was your so you, what was your pain level? You think it was like around ten there. And you, did you take any pain medicine at all? You didn't take no pain medicine. So we can't contribute to the pain medicine. So what, what what we did was we just activated the word of God. The word of God says that if we anoint this anoint those that are sick or hurting with oil, and then the elders we come and we pray the prayer of faith. The Bible says if we lay hands on the sick. That, that they'll recover. And so we did, and he recovered. Now, I, now, I don't know. You all, honestly, you're used to stuff that other people aren't used to. Now, don't think I'm, don't think I'm trying to, I, I'm not trying to bump us up. But I'm telling you the, the, the God honest truth. We've been preaching for over 20 years, literally. Listen, y'all, we've been preaching for over 20 years. We've been in. We've I've been. To, we've been to a lot of churches. To preach in a lot of churches. We have ministered in a lot of churches. We haven't been part of a lot of churches. We've been part of like three churches all our lives. But we. Uh, but we've been in some churches. We've been in some settings. We. We've been in some. Some. Some situations. You'd be like, Lord, how do we get into this thing? We got into some church church services that we was like, Lord, if Lord, if you get me out of this service, I ain't never coming back again. <laughs> I remember Bishop Dixon used to get us in church services. You'd be like, what in the world? One time he said, I'm going to buy y'all some chicken afterwards since I got y'all in this. So, you know, it was in church. They would say, in Jesus' name, we were praying. And then he wanted to stop praying. He said, I said in Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to pray. For the dream catchers. And there's also, you like, what you pray for that? And they just kept going on and on. And I like prayer, but their prayers, that I did, I did some horrible prayer. I did not enjoy myself. I, did, I, I tried to do everything else other than pray. I tried to have to use the bathroom. Y'all know when you try to have to use the bathroom. You be one, you know when the times when you want your child to cry so you can take them out, you know. It was one of them type of times, you know. I'm like, I want to get up out of here. But we've been all type of churches. But and, and we've been to a lot of different churches, and we've been to a lot of different churches minister, and, and, and then we experienced a lot of churches and fellowship. And one of the things that a lot of churches, you really honestly see if someone is sick, they, 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 they will come and pray for them, and then they will still be feeling it the whole way through the service for the most part. You'll see times when you go to services, and the last thing people are thinking about, let's pray until they get results. You get what I'm saying? Uh, and so, um, and so, oh, and Elder Thompson's cool. Um, and you know, we prayed for her the last week, and because she was, in, uh, she was just going through a little thing, some things, and uh, you know, then you do the natural thing, call the paramedics, make sure everything's cool, and then she goes, cool, amen. 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 Give God praise. Amen. 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 She's cool in here, and uh, but but I think we take it for granted sometimes. Yes. Certain things we honestly do. Yeah. Um, and the reason why I know is because when we go do what we do here, other places, they be like, whoa, yeah. whoa, mm -hmm. 
you know, even when it comes down to the simple laying hands, on, you know, because I know when the healing anointing is in my hand, yeah. he put it in there, and I know when it's, I feel it, I know when I feel it working, yeah. and everything, I know when I feel it, and, 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 and you don't, a lot of times, unless I'm serious, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not, it's a lot of churches that got power like that, but sometimes we take for granted what we get, right. you know, we really do, um, uh, and so appreciate what you get, and, and just, just, just always praise God for it because we do take it for granted. Now, that's why we need to keep inviting people and getting people to the house of God because if we can get them to come and to come enough um, uh, to hear the word because uh, and to come to get ministry, then God will do a work in their life and they will experience stuff here that they don't experience at the other churches that they go to just to have regular Sunday morning service. All right, y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so we thank God. Let's give God for the soul that got saved. So, let's give God praise for the soul that got saved and for touching, touching your uh, your your minstrels, your minister, your minister of music's uh, body. Amen. 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 Isaiah 64. Turn there. It's, I, I was looking at it and the, the Lord was dealing with me about stuff because we got a lot of false doctor, doctrine out there in the world. A lot of seducing spirits, doctrines of devils. We got hyper grace out there where they're talking about grace in a way that just don't even make sense. Uh, where they're messing up the power of the tithe to try to eradicate the tithe. A lot of people enjoy that because they don't want to tithe anyway. Uh, most folks enjoy that not because I don't want to be in the law, but because they just don't want to tithe. They want to be able to get out of the time whenever they want to get out of the time. And so, and so uh, because God didn't tell you to tithe, though, you'd be cursed, like with a curse, like I'm going to curse you and then put another curse. No, he was saying, if you don't tithe, you want because the ground is cursed. You're going to be, you're going to be cursed to have to deal with the curse. You're going to be, I mean, you, you just, you just put yourself in a bad situation. And, and, uh, and it's not about trying to make God bless you because we're already blessed. And so we found out that we know that tithing it has nothing to do with the uh, law uh, that being being introduced by the law. Listen to this. If anybody says it to you, tell them this. The law, the law did not introduce tithing. Tithing it included tithing. The law did not introduce tithing. Tithing was going along before the law ever came into existence. Uh, the law included tithing. It included it in the in the law. Now, now watch this though. So, so if we keep trying to take away the law, Janet, that means you. That means uh, that means the Bible when it says um, uh, don't don't commit adultery on my wife, thou shalt not commit adultery. That means that's under the law yeah. of Moses. Mm -hmm. So does that is that is that irrelevant now? Mm -hmm. So 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 why is it that one of the law is not relevant? But the other ones are. Right. You get what I'm saying? And so that's because it has to. That's because people bribe on that thing and they hold to that thing. But but uh, but I'm part of the covenant of Abraham. Amen. And the covenant and blessings of Abraham it comes with those that have a heart to to tithe at minimum ten elementary ten percent uh, unto God because of Thanksgiving. And ten percent giving is base level giving. Amen. 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 If you only give 10%, you're still a baby. Amen. Amen. Ooh, the amen. Amen start getting scattered. Amen. 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 Because there's a, that grace, that gracey goose, that goose, that loosey goosey grace is out there. You know, you know, and 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 uh and, and it's, 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 it's really it's really causing a, a lot of uh a lot of um, questions out there, but I believe that those that are founded in the Word of God, I believe that I believe that they hear and will know the truth. Isaiah chapter sixty-four, um, and let's look at verse verse four. Isaiah sixty-four, verse four. Today I want to. I don't want to perform. I want to talk and minister. All right, come on. Because I want to talk to us by Holy Spirit. Right. Pastor Parson doing his deeper life teachings. Um, so I, and, and, and uh, I'm just, I just want to do. A, I just want to do a teaching that, that that helps us where we are. 
and it'll help you, it help us corporately, it'll help you individually. Isaiah 64, do we have any more water? And everything? I, I, what toilet pulled up? Isaiah uh, 64, verse, uh, if you guys, we got two things, get, get it ready. You got one? All right, I'll just read that. Amen, praise the Lord. Isaiah 64, and verse, somebody shout, Gigi! Gigi! <laughs> Isaiah 64 and 4. Can you, can you pray for me before? Will well, y'all get it? Say, I got it. I got it. I got it. Give me, give me that. Yeah, buddy. Um, for since the beginning of the world, men have uh, not heard nor perceived, now listen to this, uh, by the ear, neither have the eye seen. Oh God, besides thee. Uh, so there's some things that nobody has seen or heard besides God. Some things that nobody's seen besides uh, or heard besides God. Now listen to what it says. What he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. He says, he says, uh, basically, it reminds you of the Old Testament scripture. Eyes have not uh, seen, ears have not heard. The things have been uh, prepared for us. But here in Isaiah 64 and 4, it says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by ear, neither have, uh, have, uh, neither have the eye seen, O oh God, besides thee, the things, I mean, that uh, what he hath prepared for them that waited for him. God has prepared some things for people, for us, for those that are waiting, that waited for him. Amen. Not that do it on their own. I was talking on Wednesday and I said something about how we just do stuff and, and we uh, how we just do stuff. And we, it's not the blessing. If we're not led by Holy Spirit, the, God is not moving in that thing. Uh, we're just doing it. I used for an example and I made sure I made the inclusion, uh, the exclusion of, uh, of, 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 uh, of, of of our sister because I know a sister because I know you was getting the car and it wasn't about you looking at the car and it wasn't about you. It was just something that the cars and it's easy to deal with. It's easy to talk about. Because you can get a car without God. Yes. Yes. Salesmen will lie enough for you. Am I right about it? They will lie, on, they will lie about everything. I mean, I had salesmen lie all type of ways. And you know you be like, I mean, Lord, it ain't me lying. <laughs> it's them. And you you know you better lie and say all type of stuff, boy. And they but they say they they know how to get you a deal. And I sold cars. I didn't lie, I was safe. But they sell and they know how to do stuff. And so you can go and just get something on your own and find the right dealership that know how to finagle for you. But that don't mean that that's the blessing of God. That don't mean that God wants you to have that. Now, so we have we can do what we want to do if we just want to do it. But God said, when you're waiting on me, I have some things prepared for you. There's some things that I have prepared for those that are wait that wait on me. Look at your neighbor and say, wait on the Lord. Today, I want to talk about waiting. Waiting. I was trying to think about a good title, and I forgot the, I forgot about the title because I was looking at the content and working on the content, but it's about waiting. We talk about waiting today. We are people in waiting. What's up with this waiting? Hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Wait a minute. I'm tired of waiting. I don't know about you, but you get tired of waiting. So, But God says there's something that he has prepared for them that wait on him. Wait on him. Somebody, somebody, encourage your spirit and just, 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 just speak that in your spirit. And say, I'm gonna wait on him. Glory to God. We, we good with those. Y'all just put those. Uh, we good with those. Appreciate it though. They have those other uh, devices. Uh, they probably trip something that we put up there, right? I don't know. I want to take a chance. I want y'all to be comfortable. I'll be honest. Close to go as much as possible and have out with that. Um, I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor, I'm a usher, I'm all of it at the same time. Um, that's not good, but I uh, am. But uh, Psalms, Psalms 13, turn to Psalms 13. Thank you, thank you. 
Psalms 13. Now wait, this is not this is not a fun message already. Now I'm gonna tell y'all this is not a fun message. This is not a message you're gonna be bumped to and holler and dance and shout. But this is a message that help ground you and help and help carry you through. And it is it's a message that can help mature you. Somebody shout with me, waiting. 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 David was in a dilemma because he was waiting forever and getting persecuted. He was getting uh, he was getting all type of uh, problems. He was on a run, a fugitive. Someone else held the crown that he was anointed to hold. It's like when you you say, "Lord, we are anointed. We got the goods, God. We anointed. I mean, we. I just know we got the goods that we're God. We're called and anointed." We got, we got, some, we, we anointed of God. If you believe we anointed, I tell y'all, shake the atmosphere right quick and shout and holler. Glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. We anointed. And there's other folks that's anointed that don't have not near, don't have not near anointing nowhere. They don't have an anointing in their middle finger, in their pinky, their middle, that ring or no finger. None. They don't have nowhere. But yet they got 14 buildings. Yeah. You y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you look at folks and they don't have not an ounce of integrity in their in their in their picky toe. Nothing. But they got your key, they got the key of soul you like. Yes, they, do. Uh -huh. they don't they not they not saved, they don't love God, uh -huh. they not trying no more. They're a single mom and they and they they're acting like a hoochie mama going from man to man to try to supply their needs and do all that type of stuff and they got this and they got that and you looking at everything saying God I'm keeping myself chaste, I'm keeping myself holy I'm doing all the right I know how I'm going to church, I'm raising my kids right, I'm not running with baby daddy and running around and doing none of this mess and all that and I'm still dealing with this, I'm struggling with this, I got money problems and this floozy over here Lord I'm not judging her but I know that she is doing this, 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 and this, and she got a new car. She's doing fine. Her children got better wardrobe than mine. She lived in a better house than me. Y'all women probably never thought that way. If you were a single mother and thought that way, I dare you shout amen. Amen. David was in the dilemma, y'all, that he kind of got aggravated and frustrated about some stuff. Y'all hang with me. Don't get restless. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Just tell the truth. Psalms 13 verse 1 says, How long will you forget me, O Lord? How long, Lord, will you forget me? You feel, feel like God, you don't forgot all about me. God is like, you don't forgot. It's like when you think about a building, it's like God forgot we needed a building. He forgot we was in this cave where the air not pumping right. He forgot. He forgot that we needed some children's ministry. We got children that sitting up here bored like I want some children's ministry. He forgot we need a nursery because so these kids will be crying while I'm trying to preach. He done forgot we we need some we need some we need some more resources and so that we can do some more things. Because Jan got antsy and bored and she finds other stuff to do. You know Jenny can't sit around. She gotta do something. She gotta volunteer. She gotta do it. But that's a good thing. I'm just messing with you. You know it's true. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. You bored and you up there figuring out other stuff to do. Amen. Come on. And it's like, Lord, I need something. Give me some room to do this, that, and the other, and we can and we can work on some stuff and we can start start stuff, do some stuff with the youth. We can do some stuff with the children. But God, you done forgot all about us, haven't you? David says Psalms one, uh, Psalms thirteen and one. Oh God, he says, Oh Lord, uh, he says, How long will you thou forget me, oh Lord? Oh, Listen to the next thing. He says, Forever? Oh, Question for him. He asked him, How long? Well, how long have you? Uh, how long will you forget about me, oh Lord? Forever? David is like, I've been going through this for so long. It feels like you've forgotten about me forever. He told God, he said, God, it's like you just turned around and said, forget it, it's over. I forgot about you forever. David is going through some stuff when you feel that way. Yeah. 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 Now, how many of y'all, how many of y'all, I, I mean, how many y'all, come on, talk to me. How many of y'all feel like, God, you don't forgot about me? You don't forgot I needed a house. 
You done forgot I needed a, I, I needed a car. You done forgot I needed a wardrobe. You forgot I needed this. Crack it over too, bro, because I'm going to be chugging today. Uh, 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 I'm chugging. Look, 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 you done forgot. I, you done forgot my kids needed this. You done forgot this. You done forgot. You done forgot. Lord, it's like you done forgot all about us. We here on Washington Street just, just dangling away. Flimsy power surges. Flimsy power. Sign can't be seen worth nothing. When the motorcycle drive, everybody on Facebook, everybody hear it? I know I got more in me than this, God. Well, you don't forget. invited a million people to church. Where are they? Make it relevant for you. What is it, God? You don't forgot about me. How long? I got to deal with the same the same diagnosis. How long? How long I got to deal with the same rebellious children? How long? How long I got to deal with the same repetitive over and over marriage, over and promise in my marriage? How long? How long? I dare you shout, God, how long? Will thou hide thy face from me? You know we say seek God's face. It's like when you're praying, you done hid from it. And I've been trying to play hide and go seek, and I've been seeking you, but you can hide too good. If you hide from me, Lord, I definitely can't find you. But yet I try to seek you, and I can't seek your face. It's like you turned away from it. It's like you said, shut up. It's like you said, I'm not talking to you. And I don't know what. I go in and pray. I can't feel you. I can't touch you. I can't perceive you. It's not like it used to be. What's wrong? How long? Where are you? You don't forgot all about the promise. You forgot about what I've done. You forgot the seeds that I've sown. God, we sow thousands believing for a building. We sow thousands to world harvest believing for a building. We have gone near almost empty the account sowing seed. Thousands. No, we didn't just sow a couple hundred dollars. We sow thousands. We believe for a harvest. Yes. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? This is David talking. He says, "I got." He says, "I'm." He says, "I'm looking at my problem, and I and I and I'm feeling discouraged daily." Daily. He says, "Every day I feel discouraged. Every day I feel like quitting. Every day I feel like enough's enough. Every day I'm feeling this way." All right. Your problem? Okay. Okay. Well, I know there's a problem a lot. Uh, there's a problem. There's, there's a problem. He's like every day I'm feeling this way. He says, "How long will my enemy listen to this? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? How long is Saul, that wretched, that wretched demonic man, gonna be over me and, 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 and messing with me and running after me? How long are my enemies gonna be exalted over me? How long? How long are those that don't do right gonna seem like they do better than me?" He says, consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten my eyes. He says, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed against him. And those that are that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Now he says all this. And he deals with all that because he's dealing with all this pressure. He deals with all this pressure. He got all this going on. And all of a sudden, look at what, look what happens. The tempo, the whole, the whole atmosphere changes in this, in, this, in this song. Look what happens. But I will trust in thy mercy. Uh -huh. yeah. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Yeah. Then David lastly says, I, it's not what happens when you start talking to God. It's not what happens. It's not what you say in the middle of talking to God. My question is when you're done talking to God, what you're saying. Right. Because he started in anguish. How long is this going to be? What am I, all this stuff going on? But he ended off saying, I'm going to trust in your mercy. I'm going to rejoice in your deliverance, your salvation. I'm going to rejoice in it. And he says, I'm going to sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Uh -huh. God had to deal. He had to deal. God obviously was dealing with him. 
why he was praying and he had to change his whole tune because he was dealing with all that but in the midst of him in the midst of him feeling forgotten in the midst of him feeling forsaken in the midst of him feeling like his enemies are over over our throwing him and he's being distressed all of a sudden in the midst of the despair his despair turns to thanksgiving he started giving God thanks and giving God praise in the midst of how he was feeling and so even though you're feeling like you've been forgotten even though we've been feeling like we're on Washington Street or Street or Washington Street trying to thumb give us you know you know try to get a hitchhike to a building somewhere and trying to figure out what we're gonna do looking around here looking around there so on the seat there but nothing happening nothing going on we're not gonna we're not gonna sit back and get depressed and we're not gonna allow ourselves to get in the slums we're not gonna allow ourselves to get down and death get down right into this into the place that the devil wants us to be but rather we're gonna let this thing turn around and we're gonna turn sorrow we're gonna turn pain we're gonna turn loneliness into praise and thanksgiving and we're going to give God praise just like David did in the midst of it I don't know how long this is how I'm feeling God but I'm going to praise you anyhow yeah. he told him how he felt but then he told him basically I'm going to praise you anyhow how long do you have to wait I know you've never asked that question <laughs> how long How long do you have to wait? You ever ask yourself that, Lord? How long do I have to wait? Because is there is there a certain waiting period time? Because I know I know when you thought, Lord, I've been waiting on, I've been waiting, and uh, and I've been waiting and believing and believing God about some stuff, and and I, I'm not trying to get in the way because Abraham and, and his wife they were believing, and then after a while they said, you know what? Forget this. We've been waiting long enough. Go see the Hagar. Huh. How long is too long? Is there such as I've been waiting too long? Right. Uh huh. Is this is this a, this is a legitimate question? Yeah. yeah. Because he said, after a while, you know what? I've been waiting too long. Just forget it. I'm gonna do something else. Right. I've been waiting too long for this. I've been standing in faith, but you know what? Forget it. I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm on. I'm going to the payday loan. I've been waiting long enough for this, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and call cousin cousin Bob and cousin Bob and then I'll, I'll pay cousin Bob back later. Uh -huh. In other words, you went and you tried to do it your way, and I mean try to do it God's way, but it seemed like it just took a little too long. Uh -huh. Job 14 and 14 says this. Job told God, I'm gonna wait on you until my change comes. Come on now. So the so the so so the time to wait. And when you stop waiting, and when you when the waiting when, when the waiting has been long enough, is when the change comes. That's when you stop waiting. David said, I'm not, I mean, not David, but Job said, I got all this problem in my skin. I got all these problems. I don't even know why I'm going through this. They, he was out. He didn't know what was up. He, he was an Old Testament saint. Didn't have revelation like we had. Job didn't know what was going on. And he said, but you know what? I'm going to wait until my change comes. I'm going to wait until the appointed time. Somebody say the appointed time. There's an appointed time. I don't want to know when that appointment is. I don't know when that schedule is. I don't know when that season is. All I know is there is an appointed time. Time, there is an appointed time to the change wherever change it is. Yeah, yeah. He says, I'm going to wait to that thing. Right. Habakkuk 2 and 3 says, write your vision down because it's yeah. for and wait on that thing because it's an appointed time. Your appointment is coming. Our appointment is coming. But, you, but, but we just don't know when it's coming. And the thing about God is God's, God's time and God look at time different than we look at time. A, year, a day is a, 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 a thousand years. So a thousand years went by in our mind that God said, oh, one day. So when you look at God's mathematics and our mathematics, and when we look at God's time clock and our time clock, he, his time clock is eternity, which is no time. So we're trying to we're trying to figure out when the eternal God is going to come and do a, uh, and do a, uh, and do a, and do a manifestation for us in our time. And the more we wait in our time, the more we forget about the eternal God. But we forget because when we start focusing on time, we get out of faith because faith don't work in time. It's hard to wait on an eternal God without faith. 
Because if you're not waiting by faith, then you're going to be waiting. And if you're not waiting patiently by faith, you're going to be waiting. Uh, you're going to be waiting looking at the time. And, and it's already been a year. It's already been a month. It's already been a day. It's already been this long. And God, I mean, they said this and they said that. But God is not looking at our time clock. God got a whole different view. Now, the thing about it is this. I'm on, on, on my second point. Let me try to hurry up so I can help you finish this thing. So, the thing about it is this. God, God can do anything. See, the thing that, that tripped me out is this. God can do this. Snap his fingers. And everything's changed. God can literally just blow and all of a sudden everything's changed. Doug, you get what I'm saying? Yes. Now, God is sovereign. Yes. And he's powerful. The Bible says, the Bible says he does exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. The Bible lets us know that he got so much power that he can split a Red Sea. The Bible lets us know that he can cause mountains to fall. The Bible lets us know that he can do impossible. He can keep the sun still. He can cause, he can cause the moon, the sun, everything to stay still. That God can just do miracles. God can heal someone of a, of a, of a, of a disease in a moment. God can, he can, he can take a broken leg and heal it. He can, you ever Right about it. Yes. When we think about the ability of God and then what God can do, we say this: God, okay, God, I know, I know, I, I know you can do anything. Y'all said this before. I know you can do anything. I know you got all power and I and everything. And I'm not trying to rush you, and I'm not trying to be in doubt, but I'm trying to figure out why I gotta wait so long when all you gotta do is blink and it'll change. All you gotta do is speak one word and it'll change. Why am I going through this for so long? When you you said in the word that the heart of the king is in your hand and you turn it whithersoever you will. So God, why don't you just turn it already? Yes, why? Yes, turn it. The problem is not the ability of God, but it's the impatience of man. Woo! Now impatience show out so many times in something because the Bible says this, we got to make sure we be not weary and well doing. Am I talking to anybody about anything? Yes. Can you relate to it? Because you're like, yes. Lord, I've been, I've been, I've been deep. Do when is my due season gonna come? Yes. And today we're not gonna speculate. We're not gonna say nothing unless Holy Spirit say something specifically. But we just gonna talk in generalities of when due season will come because nobody knows. All right. That's all you can do is just walk. All you can do is walk it out, hey, walk it out, hey, walk it out, hey. That's it. That's all you can do is walk it out. That's it. Look at your name and say, you walk it out. Walk it out. That's why the Bible says we walk by what? Faith. And not by sight. Now watch. Now let's look at this. Are y'all, if y'all okay, y'all say, y'all say, I'm all right. Let me know. Psalms 33 and 20. Write these down and go back and listen to this and write it down. I see if you all, see you all need to be studiers. You, you all need to be students of the word. Right, yeah. God. And see, you need to be, let me, let me, let me sound braggadocious and egotistical. Okay. You need to be studiers of the word. You know, you need to be avid studiers of the word and observer and observers of your pastor. You need to come and observe to see the things that I've said and the things that was going on. And, and, and you need to you need to follow your man of God and your woman of God. Because as you follow us in the word, as you follow us, all of a sudden you begin revelation. I'm telling you. You go back and listen to us. Yeah. Hear us. Write down what we said. You need to be, you see, in this damn time, you need to, you, you need to act like you're a court stenographer and listen to everything and write down whatever you need. Right. Meditating on this thing. Because it's not about the ability of God, it's about now the impatience of man. Psalms 130, sorry, no, Psalms 33, 20. Psalms 33, 20, listen to this. Our soul waiteth for thee, uh, Lord. He is our help and shield. He's our help and our shield. Say wait on the Lord. When you look at the word wait, it means to hope, to expect, to hope for. It means to tarry. Go tarry in the upper room, wait. Um, it means to be patient. Psalms 37 and 7 says waiting patiently. Those two words uh, give one meaning. Waiting patiently, then this will trip you out. If you have a if you have a concordance, look it up yourself. It's in it's uh did I write the um, Hebrew key? Let me see what I wrote down. I didn't write it down. Uh, yes, I did. I wrote it down over here. Um, in the in the Hebrew in the concordance in the Hebrew key twenty three forty two. Um, wait patiently. Two words together. They mean this to dance. <laughs> that one of the meanings is to dance. So if you're not dancing, you're not waiting patiently. 
It means to twist and to twirl, to whirl. It means to wait longingly. It means, uh, it, it means, it, it, it means, it, 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 those, some, those are the definitions. To dance, to, to twist, to twirl, to whirl, to wait longingly. It, it, it says to dance. Dancing is, 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 is a way of praising God. So a praising is, is one of the ways you wait. But not only by praising when the church and praising like that, but yet what I wrote to make sure I remind myself is this. Dancing and twir dancing, twirling, and all of this, all of those are signs and all of those are symbol symb symbolic of joy, number one. Somebody said joy. joy. See, waiting patiently is not being, oh my God. I, I don't know about you, but see, God got me on my own personal study. And see, it's probably going to leak out to you also. I'm on my own study about against murmuring and complaining. Because 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 God said if I can do, if I can do that and get rid of some of that that I got I see I, I complain about something hard don't clap now I'll murmur and everything don't clap now see I stop clapping see, the, the devil the guy in her hands not uh, but no I, I do my own study on that thing that's my own personal thing because I'm working on that thing because if I want more power I got to get rid of something. I know Grace said, I know Grace just said, it's on you and all oh, hallelujah. Well, why nothing happening for you? Why? So you we, we come on, you give it and, and pray and oh, it's the grace and it's already on you. Why ain't nothing happening for you then? Y'all get what I'm saying? So obviously something is stopping up or hindering the, the power of what God wants to do. So God said, go and study and look up everything about murmur, murmuring, murmur, murmureth, complain, complaining, complaineth, and everything involved. Look it up. Define it. Go deep. Go deep. And look it up. I said, oh, I'm going to break some Sunday. It's not for them. It's for you first. Don't be thinking of us. <laughs> and so I said, okay, I'm, I'm, I said, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I said, I'm going to do that. I said, I'm going to do that. I said, I'm going to do that. And so, I, be, I begin, I said, I'm going to do that because if I do that, then then because waiting, wait, it's hard to wait patiently when you have a complaining spirit. Oh. It's hard to wait patiently, Savon, when you have an angry spirit. Yes. Because while you're waiting, you don't get angry. It's hard to wait patiently when you have an annoyed spirit yes. about yourself. Yes. When you get annoyed all the time. Yes. Everything get on your nerves. Yes. When you get sensitive. Yes. It's hard to wait yes. patiently. Yes. It's hard. It's hard to have joy. Yes. So it's not even only about dancing. It's not just only about dancing or twirling. That, but yet, you should be praising dance, giving God a praise all the time. It symbolizes joy. Yes. Dancing and, 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 and twirling and whirling and that type of victory stuff deals with it's about victory also. I need to wait in victory. Yes. I need to wait victoriously. Yes. See, when I wait victoriously, I'm not crying because of the problem. When I wait victoriously, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Uh, I'm waiting like a winner. Wow. I'm waiting, watching y'all, knowing that it's already done. I'm not waiting like, oh, why is this happening to me? Why in the world? Every time I turn around. Come on. Right. Because I don't know about you. When we're going to get a building, I say any day now. Right. In my mind, I thought we should have had a building four years ago. And sometimes I don't, and somebody said, well, we, well, what's the reason why? And I done prayed about it, fast about it, asked God about it. And that's something that I, is a mystery even to me. I don't know why. And I can hear a lot of stuff about a lot of things. But when it comes down to me about that, it's silence. Yeah. I ain't not, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'm like, God, what's up? Uh -huh. And then when you where you are, doing whatever you do, you got folks that you that's known for knowing God and hearing God. They come, they say, well, you're right where God wants you to be. And you be like, okay, all right, fine, whatever. But God, why this? And you, you're trying to figure out because it seems like it's been a while. And, you know, we've already, we've had buildings. Yeah. We've had nice buildings. Yeah. We've had a nice crowd. Come on, we ain't, been, we ain't just been here yesterday. Yeah. You know, we had our, you know, we had our, we, had, we, were, we, were, we were doing great in the Codina building. That thing was huge. We did great in the Carroll Walker building. Yeah. We did great in the 30th Street building. We did good when we was over there on, on Windsor before things started twisting and changing. 
We, we, you know, and it's not like we just got here like, oh my God. We, no, 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 no. We know God can and leads and guides. We know it. Yeah. But it's like, God, what's up? Right. How long are we going to wait? Did you forget about us? I'm talking to us and I'm talking to you because not only we got to be patient because you look at me and her and you say, God, what's going on with them? Why? Hey, they found nothing yet. The pastor, come on, what we doing? What's going on? I don't know. Come on. Come on. All I know is I'm going to look and keep on standing and do what I got to do. Am I right about it? Ain't not, I can't make a building come to pass. I can't make God open up a door tomorrow. I can't make it. All I can do is say, God, this is how we feel. This is what's going on. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to believe you. We're going to stand on your word. And in your life, instead of falling out, blaming somebody, getting aggravated, getting frustrated, getting mad at everybody, isolating yourself, and doing all these other fleshly things that we do when we've been waiting for a while or been dealing with something continuously, we got to learn to stand in the midst of it. And if we learn to stand without complaining, without wanting to backslide, without wanting to leave, without wanting to give up, without wanting to say, God, why? Without wanting to murmur or complain, Maybe we will get delivered from the thing we've been going through if we get off of the flesh and out of the flesh and learn to stand when we want to give up. Tell it, tell it. The fact that you got frustrated lets me know you're still in the flesh. Come on, that's it right there. Real in it. Frustration is flesh. Come on, come on. It's, it's, it's either flesh or spirit. Right, well. Now you see. The fact that you guys said, oh, I'm mad about this thing. Let me know you didn't got in the flesh, don't you? Yep. Don't it's not righteous indignation. All right. All right. The fact that you annoy, maybe you in the flesh. Oh. The, fact that, the fact that you're snapping with folk around the church and your children, you in the flesh. Oh. Well, they my kids. God, that means you in the flesh. Oh. If you pray more, you won't be being snappy with the kids. Right. If you pray more, you, you, oh, you won't be so snappy oh. with everybody. Well, you in the flesh too much. And the fact that we can't see the reason God says I'm trying to do this thing in the spirit. I'm trying to do this thing supernaturally. I'm trying to get my name to be glorified, not you to be glorified. So I'm trying to do this thing supernaturally. But I can't do this thing supernaturally if you keep being in the flesh. If you keep walking in the flesh, I can't. I, you you gonna keep hindering me? Let me hurry up because I can't get nothing I want to say out. Next week is gonna hit part two. Uh, Tar, you can do good with something on something like that. You're doing that. Part of that thing about that is joy, victory, and also celebration. Joy, victory, and celebration is not walking around moping, looking upset, and all that. Jesus, it's 12 again. Um, part of the servant, part of the servant, it is also gives the idea of a server, of serving like a waiter. Y'all know the scripture says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. No, stop. They that wait on the Lord shall what? Renew. Well, no, no, no. They that wait on the Lord shall what? Renew. Let's say it again. What? They that wait on the Lord shall do what? Renew. They that wait on the Lord shall do what? Renew. Renew what? Their strength. You, you, you renew what? Their strength. They, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their what? Strength. Why are you so weak? Come on, help us. Come on, man. Why are you so tired? been waiting and this has been going on for a while now. I'm tired. No, no, no. They that wait on the Lord, those that are in waiting, those that are waiting on the Lord, renew their so that means when you strip, when you are when you are when you are serving God and doing what God called you to do, doing all that God. Then see the problem why the reason why you haven't renewed your strength is because you in the flesh, you're doing all your stuff. You 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 you, you you're running doing all. You're serving your own self. You're waiting on yourself. You're waiting on your own life. You're not waiting on the. You're not waiting on the Lord. When you waiting on the Lord, that's Lord. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? When you wait on the Lord and do it how He wants you to do. It. The Bible says you renew your strength. But when you're waiting on yourself, doing what you want to do, serving your own flesh, that's when you get tired. Why are we so young but so tired? Why in the world are we so young and our bones aching and hurting and cracking? You too young to be so tired. You're not 50. You shouldn't even be feeling that way. You should have more strength than ever. You're too young to be tired.
but they that renew the, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. So you can't say, I'm waiting, so I'm tired. No, wait and renew your strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run. They shall run and not grow or be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Because in the verses before it says, He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint. Even the young, even our young folks shall feel tired. But look what it says. And be weary. And young men shall utterly fall. But if you wait on the Lord, it's going to renew your strength. Yeah. Woo, I, come on, give God a hand clap of praise yeah. right now. For, for strength in his presence. For strength when you wait on him. For strength, hallelujah. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me see how I can close this thing out. Waiting patiently is something. Now, so, so that means waiting is, is, is so interesting. Waiting is important. But God, God has the ability to turn everything around tomorrow. Right. So he could have turned around right. yesterday. Right. Right. But yet you still wait. He could have gave you a house yesterday. Uh -huh. yes. He could have gave us a building last week. Uh -huh. yes. He could have gave you a key of soul yes. two years ago. Right. Right. How many of y'all believe for something right now? Yeah. He could have gave it to you already. But you are waiting. And if we don't learn and, and learn how to walk and wait and walk in this thing of waiting, we will never ever really receive because before you can ever receive, you've got to learn to wait. And part of your receiving, believing you receiving, is learning how to act when you're waiting. Come on. Because when we wait, oh, waiting, oh. listen to this, watch, this will help you out. Waiting takes patience, uh -huh. character, discipline, and consistency. Waiting takes growth. Babies can't wait on the Lord. Babies get impatient. Babies holler and whine. Babies complain. Babies have temper tantrums. How many temper tantrums have you had since you've been going through what you've been going through, since you've been believing for what you've been believing for? I'm believing for my healing, and you're going through some stuff, and all of a sudden, why I gotta go through this? Why all that? Why is it taking so long? I'm tired of this. I'm tired of hurting. This is something. All these little complaining going on. We used to spend more time talking about how you're tired of it and how you're going through it and how you're hurt. Then you heal in the word of God and meditating on that. You do more talking about that than talking about the word. So when you're waiting and all you're doing is talking about the problem and magnifying the problem, you, all you're doing is magnifying the flesh and strengthening the flesh and strengthening the problem. But when you sit there and say, I'm waiting on the Lord and I am healed, I go, ah, glory to God. I'm healed by the power of God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Then, Lord, I thank you by your stripes. When you learn to say, even though, even though you, even though you're hurting, even though you don't have no money, even though you don't know where the money coming from, and the bill is due on Wednesday, even though your account got 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 all messed up and you don't know how, you looking at everything, and instead of you saying, I don't know how I'm gonna make it, and making sure everybody here, you don't have gas. Everybody, he makes sure everybody here, how you don't have no money. You make sure that you hit, show it, tell everybody. I mean, I don't know, I'm gonna make it through the week because I don't have no money, but I guess I am. No, 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 no. You can't be doing that and trying to be vocal. That that is trying to throw a hint so somebody can bless you. That is not faith. You all up to mind, you gotta wait with the God, but yet you probably got a problem when you're broke. If you don't have no money in your pocket, you're mad. If you don't know where money coming from, you're mean. If you if you if your job is looking funny, all of a sudden you're cussing. Oh, there's always a problem when you don't have a, no money. If you sick, if you're uncomfortable, if you don't have no money, your character changes. If you if, if you got some problems going on, your character changes. If things are not working like you wanted to work, or things are not manifesting like you want to the manifest your character changes. You go from the praise of the Lord to the to the Godzilla. And we wonder why we haven't received from God. It's because we act like a jackass all of the time. Come on. Come on. You know why. Come on. We can the same the donkey at the break of day. If you do not feed him, this is what he'll say. He haw, he haw, he haw, he haw, he haw. And y'all act just like donkeys. 
up there braying and he hawing all the time. I woke you up. It's time to go now. That's what that's what happens. You can't go around complaining all day and expect to have right. expect to have manifestation tomorrow. Right. You can't expect to live like a demon all day and expect manifestation tomorrow in the midst of grace. Grace gives you the power to not live like a demon. Grace gives you the power to not fornicate. Grace gives you the power to not lie. Grace gives you the power to do right. And what we do is we live all crazy and do all type of craziness, and then we want manifestation. And when it don't happen, we get more antsy and we get angry and we get aggravated. We let our character just let it go. We don't care because we like God and feel like God forgot about us. We like David. I God done forgot about me. But when you know that you know that you know that God says, I will never leave you nor forsake forsake you. I'm going to be with you until the end of time. I'm going to be with you when you go to heaven. I'm right there with you. No matter the good or the bad or the ugly, I'm not going nowhere. When you know God is with you, God is for you, nothing can stop you. When you know that in the midst of waiting, in the midst of the bad time, in the midst of not knowing where the manifestation is coming, you don't know when the bill will get paid. You don't know if the lights get cut off, when they're going to get cut back on. You don't know where the gas but all I know is that I'm going to trust in the Lord and I'm going to wait on the Lord because God got something prepared for them that wait on him. Somebody shall wait. Now listen. I'm going to leave the podium again if I the money come. You know? Leave the podium come back to me. I got to stop. It says it's 1 o'clock. What, what, what can I read? If I offended anybody, please forgive me. Uh, waiting shows waiting shows waiting shows us our flaws Deuteronomy 28 I don't know if we get we, 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 we are um, it's 107 Jesus this, I didn't know this was going to be this good Deuteronomy 8 um, verse 2 says and you remember the way the Lord took you these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee, to teach thee, to know what was in your heart, whether thou would uh, keep the commandments or no. And he humbled you, verse 3, and suffered thee the hunger and fed thee with manna, watch this, uh, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might know what, uh, that, that you might know that man lives by bread alone and not by the word, of, and not by, you know, man lives by the, every word that comes out of the mouth of God. He says, the time... You was in, you, it took 40 years for you to finally believe me. It took 40 years for me to get those flaws together. It took 40 years. My question is, how many more years is it going to take us before we reach our dreams? How many more years is it going to take you before you go and actually do what you're called to do? How long, how many years does it have to take you before you start that successful business? How many years is it going to start? How many years is it going to take you to finally get married? Because sometimes being married is not about finding the man. God knows where every man is. Sometimes it's about God finding out and finding you and getting you straight. Come on. Ooh. Yep. When? Because waiting shows up, shows your flaws. Your issues. And God's like, I put the pressure on while you were waiting so you can see what was in there so now you have to work on it. Why are we waiting? I don't know, but you know when it comes down to you, if you take time and you figure out your character flaws, that's probably why you're waiting. Yeah. All right, let me, let, me, let me see how I can stop this. Mm. Waiting takes trust that God is not only, watch this, y'all, working on you, but also on everything else to bring, uh, to bring about his will. He's not just working on you, but he's working on everything else. God goes before you make the place straight. He's working on other stuff so that you can get the way you have to go. See, you think it's just him working on you, but he's working on other people and places and things too. And people, God, when he deals with people, it's unstable how things happen sometimes because everybody don't cooperate with God. Right, right. Because God is working with flawed people to bring about what you believe in for. Let me, let me, let's finish with this. Let me, let's finish with this. Let's finish with the scripture. All right, I got them all bookmarked, so all I got to go on bookmarked. I got a lot of them, but I didn't read a lot of them. I'm just going to read this one. Um, somebody say, I'm waiting on the Lord. 
There's, there's a, there's a, listen to this scripture right here. Um, listen to, uh, actually the Bible talks about how it's those that, those that wait on the Lord, God says you're blessed. You saw he said he got something prepared for you that waiting on him. You know the Bible says, there's a scripture, scripture that says if you wait on the Lord, you won't be ashamed. Psalms uh, 69 and 6, let not them that wait on thee, O Lord, uh, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. See, when you wait on the Lord, God says, I'm not going to let you be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we, we nervous that ain't going to happen. Okay, let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. I'm, I'm hurrying. For real. I really am. So many good scriptures. Um, but I'm not going to read those. I'm going to read this one. One of we, we all know these. I'm a, we, we bring it home right here. Watch this. I, brought, I bust the portfolio out. Boy, I told you, you going to watch it. When you bust the portfolio out, we going to watch it, boy. As Jerry came and says, I'll write in my portfolio. He said, oh, I'm just letting this he saw, the, he saw the portfolio out. I'm telling you, boy, you got some good stuff in here. Um, listen to this. Psalms 37. Let's start at verse 3. Trust in the Lord with all, trust in the Lord and do good. And so shall thou, so shall thou be fed um, in, in the land, and, and so shall thou be fed. Uh, delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord also, I trust, and trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. I dare you shout if break God is bringing it to pass. So I, watch it. Somebody say, say, it shall be. Say it again, it shall be. It says, it's the Bible says, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and, the, and thy judgment as the noonday. Verse 7, Psalm 37 and 7. Rest in the Lord. See, if you see, you can't be worrying and rest. When you wait in God says, rest in me. Rest in me. Rest means that I'm not, I'm not frustrated. I'm not aggravated. I'm not worrying. I'm just going forth. I'm at peace. I'm at joy. I'm good. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself because of the evil doer. Fret not yourself of him who prospers in his own way because of the man who devises wicked devices uh, and brings them to pass. He says, don't look at everybody else. Don't look at those that's prospering in their own way. Don't look at those that's doing their own thing and seem like they're getting by. Don't look at all that because verse 8 happens. You get angry. So he says, cease from anger and forsake wrath and fret not thyself at any wise, in any wise to, the, to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off. Watch this. But those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. I know you've been waiting for a while, but just rest in the Lord and just relax and know that those that wait on the Lord, he has something prepared for you. You shall not be ashamed. He got some things for you that you are blessed and he says that you will inherit the earth. In other words, you gonna have what you've been believing for. You gonna have what you've been standing for. God is gonna bring it to pass. I pray your heart. Let God begin to move in your heart. Let him work things out inside of you. Oh God, take out everything inside of me that's not like you. Take out all the frustration. Take out the anger. Take out the aggravation. Take out all those things that that's messing my manifestation up while I'm waiting. Take out my character flaws. Oh, wash me, oh Lord. Cleanse me, oh Lord. Lift your hands and ask the Lord to wash you. Lift your hands and ask the Lord to give you, give you what you need. Lift your hands and ask God to take it out. Take things out of you. Oh, now you go real quick before we got, before you have to go. And before we got to stop, before we stop, just crank it up a little bit for me. And I want you to go ahead. Come in, Christian, if you will, if you mind. Come in for a minute and just, just give them some symbols for like five, all I need is five minutes. If you could be five minutes, Richard. All I need is five minutes. And we're going to stop and get ready to take up this thousands of dollars. Woo! Now what I want y'all to do What I want y'all to do is I just want y'all I want y'all to begin to think about the character flaws. 
Think about it. See, I know what God told me. God told me, He says, begin to begin to begin to study worry, begin to study murmuring up out of it. Let the word bring it up out of you. All the plan. I don't know about you, but I'm excited and, and, and I'm excited and nervous at the same time. But I know some of y'all dealing, y'all believe for some stuff. You passed your test already. And so you got you got you thinking about you got that, you got the test papers. Glory to God. You got you got things you believe in for. You gotta learn to rest in the Lord. You still trying to figure that one out. You still trying to figure that one out? Because I, I say you gotta rest in the Lord, then I heard the Lord say she's still trying to figure that one out. And so 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 just so so begin begin to begin to every time you start feeling yourself worried and you feel, feel your mind going there. Just verbally open your mouth and remember Psalms 37 and 7. Say, Lord, Psalms 37 and 7 says, rest in the Lord. And I'm going to open your mouth and say, Lord, I'm going to rest in you. And just, just, just keep on saying that, Lord, I rest in you. And you feel your mind going that way. So, Mama, come stand right here for me right quick. Because before you go, I got to obey what the Lord is saying about that. We're going to give a couple minutes. Because I want you to let God work on you. You've got to work on some things. Because next week, we're going we to add now we're gonna add to it, and I may get my wife to help me with this too next week and talk about waiting and what's what's in my heart about waiting. She may have some stuff on her heart, she talking she feel about waiting and let her talk about some stuff too. Um but but uh but I want you all because some of you need houses. Did you get a did did, did uh did the DJ get a car? Did your mom get a car yet? She didn't get a car? You know, I know people believe for cars, I know people believe for careers. You still, you know, you, you, you believe in for careers and believe in for things going on. I know you were a substitute teacher and you were using massaging yesterday, but you was massaging and they told you doing more massaging yet now. Yeah, I'm making the chiropractor office that I'm in. So you're in the chiropractor office. So believe, believe in God for the weight and believe in God for stability and, and for and for uh, increase in clientele and business and all that type of stuff. We believe for that. We believe for business uh, to go forth over here. We believe for month, month, monthly money to stretch. We believe we're going through diagnosis in our body. To DJ, you still, you still, you still, you still going through stuff in your body. You still, I mean, got stuff going on in your body. My wife got stuff going on in her body. You know, got stuff going on in the body. So I'm saying we all in, in a place of waiting. But what, what, but what, listen, in the midst of waiting, remember this, we believe that we receive, right? So, so that's why we wait with joy. That's why we wait victoriously. And that's why we wait with celebration. Because we believe we receive. And we know God will do it. And that's why we act a certain way. Because God will do it and he will do it. But it's going to happen in the spirit and it's going to happen. Uh, and it's going to happen in his, in his appointed season. And so you just got to walk in faith. Glory to God. And so now I want you to let God shine the light on. God will shine the light on. And God will even deliver you from some stuff today that will help you get quick manifestation. There's some stuff you can get manifested this week. If I told you, God says, you can get some stuff manifested this week if you let him take certain stuff out of it. The same way, the same way, the same way, the same anointing that will cause, that, that will be on us and we pray for one, pray for them and it's not hurt and then all of a sudden they stop hurting. That same anointing says you can get quick manifestation this week because you had a word of favor come over the, over the mouth of the prophets. Faith, didn't y'all hear that word about favor? Y'all heard that word about favor? Somebody shout favor. That favor is out there right now waiting for you. Are you going to let your flesh get you out of the way? I'm not. Glory. I'm going to figure out a way next week to make a tool in here. They might get some triple, triple, under trick breakers in here. I'm going to be up and glass this baby. Glory to God. We're going to have to be like the Arctic Serpent in here. I'm going to get some Moby to you. I'm telling you, we're we going to be comfortable until we get out here. I ain't going to be fighting on it. Hallelujah. Glory. It's choreographed. See, there's stuff God has for you that you got to get ready for. Y'all ready? So let God take some stuff out of you. Let God shine some stuff on you. Let him work on you. Just a couple of minutes. 
and they're gonna they're gonna crank up the music and they're gonna uh, and they and they're gonna crank they put the cymbals and, and everything and God be talking to them and dealing with them while they do that and uh, and then I'm gonna just minister some arm right quick and then uh, and then y'all just do that. Y'all ready? Glory to God. This is your altar call. This is the time God says I want to get with them. I want to deal with them. Let God deal with you. Let God talk to you. Hallelujah, Father. I pray God as we come before you, you take stuff out, put stuff in, show, shine the light on us, and begin to minister to us so that we can get out of the way as we wait. We believe we receive. Now, as we wait, we want to receive it and manifest. We want manifestation. We've been waiting for a long time. We've been feeling like you forgot about us. So, Father, take out all discouragement. Take out all despair and distress in the name of Jesus. And God, begin to touch, begin to encourage, begin to move in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and give God, give God your all. Go ahead and give God your attention. Let him talk to you. Go ahead. Close your eyes and focus on him. As soon as you get in the flesh, you you entering into the hindrance zone. 
And so we've been trying to receive from a spiritual God in a fleshly manner while we waited. So waiting takes growth. It takes more. It, you grow more while you wait than you do when you get somebody to lay hands on you and you fall out. You grow more when you wait than you do when you dance. But we don't like to wait. I don't. How to, waiting for your finance to change. It takes faith. Walking that thing out. So given the information is on the screen. So you see to all those that's watching that's on, uh, on, uh, the vir that's on the virtual end of it. Bless you. Thank you for your participation. God bless you. The Lord bless you. You listen. You receive everything also. So receive it in the name of the Lord. Father, bless this offering. Bless this time of giving in the name of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are our that you are our, our provider, that you provide for us, that you give for us, and we give you praise, God, that we are rich, that we are abundantly supplied. Somebody shout, I'm rich. I'm rich. We are abundantly supplied. We have more than enough in the name of the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That Lord, that we tithe because we think we 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 are thankful. We tithe because we appreciate you. We tithe and we give our offering because, Lord, we say you've been so good to us. And as we tithe and give our offering on today, as we sow our seed, I pray, God, that you will just manifest yourself mightily in our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we give on today, we corporately make this declaration that we believe we receive our building. Yes. Come on, y'all, holler it out with me. Lord, we believe we receive our building. We believe we receive our building. Yes, Lord. It was going on with it. And we believe in God and looking and doing what we can do. Because it's going to take faith. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, why don't you. Hallelujah. Uh, why don't you say amen to Sister Stacy come up and take up the offering and, and, uh, and get ready to dismiss us and everything? Amen.